Yo, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to GTM Gaming and Delectables. I'm your host, Gathering the Magic, and let's talk battle rooms. Okay, so what is a battle room? So this is my idea for a new game mode, uh, player versus environment mode. Um, and this could actually end up being the main focus of the game over uh, just ranked rewards. So what this is, is this is PVE. So you're not playing against a bot. You're not battling other players. You're playing against um, a game designed by Splinterlands. Uh, this can be played anytime, day or night. You don't need to worry about match liquidity since you're not playing against an opponent. So I know one of the problems right now is the whole uh, need for match liquidity because there's not a lot of players playing the game at certain levels. So it's really hard to get players matched up. With this, you can play anytime. You don't have to worry about an opponent. You're just playing against the game. Okay, so what are the battle rooms? So the battle rooms to start are they're going to be card edition specific. Now what that means is each battle room is linked to a specific card edition. So if you enter a battle room, uh, one of them could be like an alpha battle room. So that's for alpha cards only. Uh, beta, beta battle room for just beta cards, you know, and so on and so forth. One of the main points of the battle rooms is only cards that you own can be used. So you can't use rentals, you can't use cards that are delegated. And another main point is no locked soulbound reward cards. So if at some point in the future soulbound cards become unlocked, um, you would be able to use those. So basically any card that you could buy off the market, you can use in a battle room. Okay, so the different battle rooms would be alpha. So you could use alpha cards or promos. Beta battle rooms, you could use beta cards, beta promos, reward cards, and cards from the Essence Orb set. Untamed, so you could use untamed cards, untamed promos, reward cards, and cards from the dice set. Uh, chaos battle room, so you could use chaos, chaos promos, reward cards, and riff watchers. Uh, rebellion, so you could use rebellion and rebellion promos. Um, you would not be able to use the uh, soulbound cards until they are unlockable. Once they're unlockable, then you could use those. And then finally, you, there would also be a gladiator battle room where you can use um, your gladiator cards and you could use any neutral cards to just kind of give you um, some cards that you can use in that battle room other than just your basic gladiators. Okay, so those are the different battle rooms. So currently you would have six different battle rooms that you could choose from. Um, each battle room will have five different levels and they're going to reset at the start of each season. So the way that the difficulty levels work are at level one. So the first time you go through a specific battle room, all of your cards are set to level one. So as long as you own a card, you can bring it to that battle room. Now let's say, for example, you've got a level three or a level five common. It's going to get set down to level one. So think of this as kind of like novice level. All cards are set to level one. As long as you own it, you can bring it to the battle room. Uh, once you complete level one, that unlocks level two. So now at level two, you can use all cards uh, up to the bronze cap, but the cards have to be maxed for bronze, meaning you have to have at least level three commons, level three rares, level two um, epics, and uh, a single legendary. So if you own above that, it'll get knocked down to those levels. Um, same thing, once you unlock level two, you go to level three, which is basically the silver cap. So you can only use max level silver cards. If you go above that, that's no problem. They'll just get set to those levels. Level four is for gold, eight, seven, five, three for your level caps. And then finally, if you can make it all the way to the end and reach level five, you can only use max level cards. So of course, the higher that you go, um, the higher your rewards will be. Um, and I was thinking something cool that they could do as well as each battle room, the first time you enter it, or maybe every time you uh, enter the battle rooms, it starts with just an animated story. So they could have like cool animations and show off the different artwork and the different characters and the lore of Splinterlands. Just, I think that's one thing that's kind of missing in the game right now is everyone is so focused on just doing the rank battles. A lot of players don't know about the lore of Splinterlands, the names of the characters, you know, their history, their background. So this would be a cool way to just kind of spice it up a little bit as well. You know, you get a cool animation uh, right at the beginning of each battle room. And maybe once you complete it as well, you know, there could be a cool um, 
victory animation, you know, of you completing that battle rune. So that's just my ideas for Nate and the team. Um, each battle room would contain 10 fights uh, to get to the end and complete that level. Um, after you complete each battle room, um, it unlocks the next difficulty level. So once you get through and complete all 10 fights on level one, that unlocks level two. Um, every battle in the battle room would take one energy. So just like a rank battle, um, every time you do a fight, it costs one energy uh, for the first time through the battle room. Uh, once you complete um, a battle room, like I said, it unlocks level two. Now, if you want to, you can fight level one again, um, but the energy cost is going to increase by one. <clears throat> so uh, let's say you complete the chaos battle room at level one and you're like, hey, that was fun. I don't have uh, enough cards at max bronze to play the level two that I unlocked. I want to play level one again. You can, but each time that you go through and complete it, each fight's going to cost you one extra energy. So the second time through, it's going to cost you two energy per fight, third time through three energy, and so forth. So you can keep doing it. It's just going to cost more. Okay, so how does the battle rooms work? What do you what do you do once you get in there? How do you fight? Okay, so what I pattern this on is um, similar to the survival mode in Splinter Forge. So you are going to fight um, either a mini boss or a team of monsters. Um, you can bring up to 30 monster cards and four summoners to the battle room. Um, cards are set to the difficulty level if your cards are above that. So if you've got, like I said, max level cards, they're going to get knocked down to uh, level one. If you're fighting, you know, a level one battle room, same thing with your summoner. If you've got a max summoner, doesn't really matter. It's going to get knocked down to whatever level the battle room is. Um, summoners can be used up to five times per difficulty level. So one of the reasons you want to bring uh, four summoners is you're not going to be able to use, let's say you're bringing Kitty. You're not going to be able to use Kitty for all 10 fights. Um, summoners can only be used up to five times per difficulty level. So if there's 10 fights, um, you have to use at least two of your four summoners. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you are fighting um, a specific fight and you lose, that counts as one use of your summoner. So you may have to do more than 10 fights to complete a level. There may be a certain boss in there that you have to fight three or four times before you can defeat it and advance uh, to the next boss or the next fight. So you're going to do a minimum of 10 fights to get through uh, the battle room. It could be much more than that. So... It's one of those things where you need a lot of strategy to figure out what specific summoners you want to bring and what monster cards. Um, similar to Splinter Forge as well for the survival mode, monsters will not heal between battles. So if your monster dies in one of the fights, you can't be used again unless you can resurrect it. Um, if your monster is damaged, that damage will carry over to the next fight as well. On the plus side, if you have a monster that has a life leech and let's say it starts at three life and by the end of the fight it goes to eight or nine that monster will be at eight or nine life when you go to the next fight so there is good and bad with that um, after you complete each fight you will automatically earn a resurrection token and you can use that token to um, res one of your monsters that you lost at some point during the fights um, but that token will disappear once you leave the battle room so it's only usable um, for the duration of when you're in that battle room. Um, and what you fight against is you're either going to fight a mini boss or you're going to fight a team of monsters and a summoner. And these will be randomized each playthrough to keep things fresh. So you're not going to fight the same mini boss every time. You're not going to fight the same team of monsters and summoners every time. Um, once the battle begins, um, or actually before the battle begins, it will show you what you're up against. So it will show you if you're up against a mini boss or a team, and then you will put your uh, team of monsters and summoners uh, together at that point. So now you're saying, well, okay, well, how much mana do I have to put my team together? How's that gonna work? Okay, so you will have a mana cap, and the mana cap is based on uh, the level of the battle room. So the difficulties of the battle rooms go from one to five. So if you're in a level one uh, battle room, you will have a mana cap of 25, level 2 is 35, level 3 is 45, level 4 is 55 cap, and if you make it to level 5, it's 99, 99 mana. Bring whatever max level cards you want. Um, you can bring one summoner and any number of monsters to reach the mana cap. 
So let's say you've got a summoner and he costs 7 mana and you're doing level 1. That leaves you 18 mana. You can use that 18 mana on any number of monsters that you wish um, to fill out your team. You don't have to use all the mana, but of course you probably want to use as much as you can. Um, so you could pick, let's say you had 18 mana left, you could pick two monsters each costing nine. You could pick, you know, six of them each cap costing three mana. It's up to you, but you know, that will be your mana cap. Um, if all of your monsters die before you complete the 10 fights, you're basically kicked out of the battle room. Um, you keep whatever chests or rewards you've won up to that point, and you will now go to the battle room rewards vendor, and you will buy keys to open your chests. Or if you want, um, you can keep your chests or, and keys that you have acquired and try to sell them on the marketplace. So one of the cool things I think about this as well is this would give us the opportunity to earn some rewards that we could actually sell on the marketplace. Let's say you're a high level player and you get through, um, let's say you're fighting an untamed dungeon. You've got a max level set, you get through level five and you get all the way to the end and you earn some um, level five untamed chess. You can open them to see what you get, or maybe you say, hey, you know what? Maybe there's a lot of players that would be interested in purchasing this. You know, maybe they want to purchase it off the marketplace. So that would be something cool as well. Okay, so what kind of rewards are you going to get um, from the from the battle rooms? Okay, so after each fight, you get a um, locked rewards chest, and the chest can be unlocked with keys that you will purchase in the re uh, the reward store from the vendor once you get to the end. Um, if you have a level one chest, it is a rusty chest and that is unlocked with a skeleton key. If you fight in level two, you will earn bronze chests, unlocked of course with a bronze key. Level three is a silver chest, level four is a golden chest, and level five is a legendary chest. And chests are open once the level has com been completed or you lose all your monsters. So let's say you fight all 10 fights, you make it through the end, at that point, um, you would purchase uh, whatever key or keys you wish to and then open uh, your 10 chests. Let's say you only make it to the fourth boss and you complete boss number four, you die in boss number five. Those four chests um, you would open at once um, at the end. Um, so now for the keys, um, keys are purchased in each battle room and keys are tied to that specific battle room. Um, they can be purchased with either SPS or DEC, which is then burnt. And this is one thing I was um, debating about. Would this SPS and DEC be burnt? Some of it sent to the DAO, um, maybe sent to the team just for another uh, source of income. Uh, I know we need more SPS and DEC sinks, so I think this could be a really good one. Um, more about the keys. So keys are tied to that specific battle room. So if you are in a Chaos uh, Legion battle room and you get keys there, that's basically a Chaos Legion key. You can't use that Chaos Legion key um, in like an alpha beta room or beta or whatever. Um, the keys will open the, all the chests in that battle room. So let's say you won 10 chests and you buy a Chaos Legion key for that, that will open all 10 chests. You don't have to buy 10 specific keys. But once you use a key, that key will disappear once you leave the battle room. So you go through your Chaos Legion battle room, you fight all 10 battles, you open your 10 chests, the key disappears. So if you come back in the next time to the Chaos Legion battle room, you would have to either have another key on your inventory that you did not use, or you will have to purchase another key. So that's how keys will work. Um, and one of the cool things too, are these chests would be kind of like the chests that we used to open in our daily and season rewards, where they would contain uh, random items now, one of the things I think they will not add and should not add would be um, SPS to these chests, but we would basically get all the stuff we're used to. You know, you would open your chest, it's random, maybe you get some merits, maybe you get some potions, uh, maybe you get some glint. Now that glint is now a currency that is desirable, um, but there are some other things that you could get as well. Um, chests will contain random items. If you're looking for more specific items, I think it would be cool if they had special keys from that reward vendor. Um, let's say you could buy a warrior key and this would give you an increased chance and an amount of merits. So if you're really looking to get merits to get uh, Gladius cases, you could buy a warrior key. And when you open your chest, maybe it's not going to guarantee you get merits, but it's going to really increase the chances that you do. And if you do get merits, it's going to increase the amount from what you would normally get. 
Uh, glittering key would increase your chance of amount of glint. Um, a tonic key, couldn't think of a better name. Uh, increased chance or amount of potions you get. So let's say you're really hurting for potions. You know, you've bought a bunch of packs. You want to open them. It's like, man, I don't have potions. I really don't feel like using my glint to buy potions. Um, maybe you want to do some of the battle runes and get a tonic key to get a bunch of potions. And then um, finally, there could be like a monster key that it will give you an increased chance amount of acquiring tokens that you can use to purchase cards. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, as you have the different levels um, of the battle rooms, you're also gonna have different level chests. So the higher level chests would probably contain some, or have the chance of containing better items. So you could, um, chests could also contain, like I said, other than just your normal potions and merits and glint, you could also get maybe keys so maybe you open a chaos chest and you get a level three untamed key or something like that. So now it's kind of like, oh man, now I could go to untamed and I don't have to worry about buying a key. You know, I won one in a chest. Uh, maybe there's some skins that they could add to the game. Uh, maybe you get totem fragments in some of the higher level chests or time crystals. And maybe for the highest level chest, you could have a chance of getting a land plot or a title or a pack. You know, they, they could really um, spice these up however they want. These are just some examples of things that they could put in the higher level chests. But of course, you're not going to find a land plot in a level one or level two chest, you know, or a title or something like that. Maybe there's a slight chance of getting a pack at like level two or three. But of course, level one is just going to have some of your basic rewards. Um, and like I said earlier, chests would be sellable on the market, maybe keys as well. Maybe um, you don't have max level cards, so there's no way you're ever going to get to level five to have a legendary chest. Maybe you can buy a legendary chest off the market. Maybe you get lucky and open one of these chests and you get a legendary key. And it's like, wow, I'm never going to go. I, I don't have the cards to get to level five, but I got that legendary key I can sell. You know, something like that. Okay, so now monster tokens. So instead of them putting cards in chests, because I do not want them putting... Um, like the current Soulbound cards in chess. That's what the Glint store is for. Um, maybe we can get Battle Room specific credit tokens. And what I mean by that are tokens that are Soulbound. So once you go through the Battle Room, those tokens will be bound to your account. But they're used in the game basically like credits. And they're used to purchase cards off the market from the set where the Battle Room is. So let's say, for example, you fight in the Alpha Battle Room. Um, you get through... You open however many chests, you know, eight chests, nine chests. Maybe you made it all the way to the end. You open your chest and maybe you got a total of 500 alpha tokens. You can use those alpha tokens to buy alpha cards off the market. You cannot sell those um, alpha tokens to anyone else. They're bound to your account and they're only able to be used to purchase alpha cards. And it's at the same ratio as credits, where basically 1,000 credits is a dollar. So if you had 500 alpha credits, that would be 50 cents. So if there was an alpha card for 50 cents on the marketplace, you know, you could use your tokens and you could do that. Um, this is kind of to encourage players to buy cards off the market to level their cards so they can advance to higher level battle rooms. Because maybe you only have um, level one alpha cards. And, you know, you've got eight or nine different ones. And it's like, you know, I want to fight in the alpha battle room. I want to get some tokens so I can buy some more alpha cards. You know, could be something you want to do. So, for example, like if you fight um, in the chaos battle room, your chaos tokens you could use to purchase chaos core cards, reward cards, promo cards, or Rift Watcher cards. Now, if for some reason the team says, hey, we can't do that, you know, we can't give away um credits like that you know to purchase cards off the market okay i understand that so if that is something that is not doable then what i would suggest they could do instead would be to create a new um, subset of cards for the battle rooms that are only available in battle room chess you cannot win these um anyway you know like in the i guess the only way we could get cards now is in the glint store so they would not be purchasable directly off the market. They would not be openable in packs. You cannot get them in glint stores. They would only be in rewards from the battle rooms. So here are some ideas for battle room only monster cards and summoners. So these cards would be similar to gladiator cards. You can only play them in battle rooms, 
but they can be played in any battle room. So let's say, for example, you get a uh, warrior uh, battle room card. You can play it in any battle room, chaos, untamed, beta, whatever. Um, they can't be used in rank play. They can't be used in brawls. And then I said land, maybe, you know, maybe it's one of those things where if you've got a high level battle room monster card or summoner, maybe they let you put it on land. You know, that's up for the team to decide. Um, a cool thing that they could do with these battle room uh, monster cards and summoners is you could give them really cool special abilities. Um, so, for example, let's say you get a thief battle room card. Um, he's, of course, starts off at level one. He allows you to unlock any level one chest without having to buy a key. So this will save you from having to buy keys at the end of the battle room. You bring your thief with. Um, whatever stats he has, you know, he's going to help you fight, of course, and then his special ability will allow you to unlock level one chests for free. And then as you level the thief up, he allows you to unlock higher level chests for free. So let's say you get your, um, you get your thief up to bronze chest level, you know, he's level, what, level three now. So he's, once he's level three, if he's a common, then you can start un unlocking those bronze chests for free. If you get them to level five, you can unlock silver chests and so on. So that I thought would be a cool idea for, for the thief. Um, the next one could be the mage, where the mage maybe increases your mana cap. So you bring a mage card, maybe he's level one, he increases your mana cap by one. Once you get him to level two, he increases it by two and so forth. So that would be a cool ability that he would have other than just whatever his basic abilities are. Um, you could have a warrior battle room card. He increases your chances of um, and your amounts of monster tokens. So if the team decides that they can go ahead and give you these monster tokens credits for purchasing uh, cards off the market, he would give you a boost there. Um, a paladin card maybe increases the chances and amount of glint. So if you're really looking to uh, increase the amount of glint that you get, you know, you'd want to bring the paladin. A uh, barbarian maybe increases your chance of getting merits. So if you're looking for, um, you know, merits to buy gladiator cards, you could do that as well. Um, summoner cards. So your summoner battle room only cards could have different abilities. Uh, maybe ones that allow you to play three different splinters. Maybe they increase your mana cap. Uh, maybe they automatically res once per battle one of your monsters that's died. Uh, maybe they give you some sort of an increase in your reward. So there's there's a lot of special abilities, I think, that they could add for cards like this. And then finally, um, something they've talked about, I don't know when they would implement it, uh, the achievement system. So once you complete a difficulty level or for every difficulty level you complete for each of the uh, battle rooms, you get an achievement. How they want to do achievements is up to them, but just something cool. And then if you complete all five levels, you'd get a title. So if you complete all five in alpha, you could get a really cool title. Um, maybe the titles would be sellable. Maybe they're bound to you. Uh, one of the things I think they should do definitely is these titles would be, uh, if they do decide they're only soul bound, you would be able to use these on land and get a bonus if you wish to do so. So that is the achievement and title section. So let me know what you guys think. Um, like I said, actually, I just thought of most of this uh, last night and today. Wanted to write it all down and put it together because I have been thinking about them doing a PV uh, player versus environment mode for quite a while. And I was just trying to think of, you know, what exactly would that entail? What would it be like? Would it be fun? What kind of rewards could they give? That kind of thing. So I think this is pretty good. I'll probably tweak it from time to time and come up with some different ideas. But overall, like I said, I think it would be a fun way to play. You don't have to worry about bots or other people. You can just log in and say, hey, I'm going to fight in the chaos battle room. It's like, man, I picked up some rebellion cards. You know, hey, I got my cards leveled. I got max silver now. I'm going to go see if I can go and unlock level three of the rebellion battle room, see what kind of rewards I can get. So I think it would add just, you know, some variety to the game and, and some really cool rewards and, and a new set of cards if they want to go with the... Uh, battle room specific cards let me know what you guys think in the comments do you have any other suggestions for this type of uh if this type of player versus environment mode or do you have your own pve mode that you've been thinking about so let me know in the comments as always guys appreciate your time thank you so much for all your support and stay the course keep on forging have fun we'll see you soon